Well, the effects of climate change can be seen around the world, whether it's in melting glaciers or bleached coral reefs. Joining us this morning is Mitchell Moffat and Gregory Brown from ASAP Science with the before and after look at this major problem. Welcome. I'm glad to be here with both of you yeah. this morning. Yeah, thank you for having us. I know. It looks like we're going to do a game show and we're going to dance. But we want to, before we get to the dance, everybody, let's talk about a refresher course. The major culprits, the big offenders behind climate change. So there are natural reasons for climate change to occur. Occur, but what we should all be more interested in is talking about the human-made effects. And so mm -hmm. from burning fossil fuels is the main one, which releases CO2, which is a greenhouse gas, which essentially keeps a lot more of the energy, the sun's energy, within the Earth's atmosphere, okay. warming everything. Yeah. All right, so that's a good refresher. We're going to yes. do our little tour around the world. Let's yeah. begin in the Yukon, the Slims River in the Yukon. You've mm -hmm. got some before photos of what it looked yeah. like prior to, let's say, climate change taking place. For sure, yeah. Through it. So over on this side, you have the river beforehand. So a giant glacier actually would fill that river. But over time, in the span of a month last year, the river dried up, as you can see on the side behind me here. Um, and so basically, the glacier has. This is the after? This is the after, and this it happened is the same very place. fast. The exact same place. And so what happened is the glacier has receded, and where the ice is melting now is somewhere completely different. So not only has it dried up a river here, but there's another river it pours into which has changed directions completely now because so much water is flowing into it. Luckily, there's been no catastrophic events because of it, but it's uh, an event that scientists didn't necessarily predict. It's the first one we we're ever noticing or ever seeing as an example. Um, and it can just kind of show how fast climate change can happen. We think of glacial speeds of things over long periods of time, yeah. but this, in the course of a month, this river went from full to empty. All right, let's head now to Colorado, uh, where the Rocky Mountain National Park is located. We've got some before photos. So take us through what is happening here. Yeah, so here you can see green foliage, which is something that we consider to be normal and what we want. But here, there's a lot of trees dying, and this is the red foliage, and this is because of a beetle called the mountain pine beetle, which is actually an important beetle when there's just a low amount of them because they kill weak trees, which allow new trees to grow in, and then that keeps the forest alive. But because of warmer summers and warmer winters, these beetles are now thriving and taking over, and it's 16 million, 16 million hectares of forest in BC has now been destroyed because of this beetle, which essentially, because they in the larva stage in the winter is when they would usually die out, mm -hmm. because the winters are so warm, they're surviving, they're thriving. And then even with all of these trees dying, it means that the, these trees are absorbing less CO2, so it's just creating a feedback loop of more climate change. But essentially, it's a mountain pine beetle, and it's evolving, and it's taking over different types of pines, and it's really hard to stop it, and it's, it's moving into Alberta now, too. This is very scary to see. Yeah, yeah, it, that, I know, that is, like, really shocking. To see. You know, <laughs> it is oh. unbelievable. Um, we, when we hear about climate change and warming, we often hear about the poles and the ice caps melting. So I want to go now to Alaska. Let's take a look at a before picture of what's happening in Alaska. Where is this and what's happening? Okay, so this is actually called Glacier Bay. <laughs> but now there's no glaciers, but it's still called Glacier Bay. Now the glacier that used to be there has been replaced with ocean water. And this is called the Muir Glacier. Okay. And in Alaska, there is about 100,000 glaciers, of which 95% of them are receding. And um, it's just another example of how when the ocean uh, continues to get rid of these glaciers, you have more water going into it. This is fresh water, too, that will go into the ocean, which creates a thin layer of fresh water above the ocean. That means that the currents change, and that will also affect like weather more easily. That's like why places like the UK are getting warmer, because the actual current that would bring cooler air there is changing. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, the Great Barrier Reef has been in the news a lot. Okay, and why? And why should be, we be watching this? I mean, well, we can see two pictures on here that are starkly different. One that's bright and colorful, and one that's basically white and pale. So the Great Barrier Reef is the largest living organism on Earth. This is a living creature. Um, and there's algae in it that actually help to feed it. But because the water temperatures change, even slightly, one degree, um, then these algae actually get kicked out of the reef. They, they suffer and the reefs are straining so much that they go through these bleaching events. And so last year, 90% of the Great Barrier Reef bleached and 20% of it died. And this year, scientists have already recorded that it's going to be another year of bleaching, year on year, back to back. And so it gives no time for the coral reef to recover. Uh, and so as we can see, the extreme results of one of the world's most natural wonders that also hosts huge diversity of fish and sharks and mm -hmm. tons and it's of different beautiful. Yeah, and, it's and, beautiful. Beautiful. and a huge tourist attraction. Wow. Uh, in our lifetime, we're seeing it decline and perhaps we'll see it go away. It seems ominous, but I feel a follow up segment coming as to, again, what can we do? Greg and Mitch, we really appreciate 
you sharing these amazing photos with us, hopefully to drive this message home. We yes, appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you very, very much. If you want more information on climate change effects around the world, you can visit our website, yourmorning.ca.